What is going on guys? I thank each and every one of you for joining me and today we're going to be going over every single thing that you're going to need to know in order to service and maintain your Daiwa BG. And for those of you that may have just purchased this reel, stick around. Even though your reel's brand new, I'm going to be touching on quite a bit of preventative maintenance. So that way your reel will stay newer longer. So hang tight. Let's get started. Let's break it down. Now starting off, you're going to need at least for the 4,000 size, a 14 millimeter wrench. As far as screwdrivers are concerned, a size zero and double zero Phillips or Posi drive will pretty much cover every single screw within the reel. You're also gonna need a pick tool in order to remove one of the clips in the side plate, which is right under here. That allows you to pull out the main gear. And you're also gonna need this is just a cheap 10 cent paintbrush. It has a tapered plastic end. So that way when you do put that main gear back in place and you wanna put that clip and get it seated, it helps push that bearing down and work the C clip while you're using your pick tool. Aside from that, it's fairly straightforward. We're gonna be using Corrosion X oil and we're gonna be using Corrosion X grease. I'm also going to be uh, doing a little bit of experimenting with uh, Aqua Shield in the bearings of this reel. So in order to open up the bearings and purge and re-lube them, you need yourself a little bit of a fish hook just to get that shield retaining clip out of the bearing. Now starting off, we're going to go ahead and remove the handle, which is fairly simple. You just basically reel backwards and it'll start unwinding and come right off. We're also now going to remove the spool. Now it's good. It's a good idea to pay attention here, and I'll see if I could separate these. So you have the click plate, the two spacing washers, a bearing, and an O-ring. This O-ring's sole purpose is to keep everything from flying off in case you remove the spool. And on some reels, I haven't seen it on the ones I've worked on. There may be a very small washer underneath the bearing. And the only thing I think that does is it keeps that inner race of the bearing from touching that top washer. This reel didn't have it. I've also worked on other 3,500 and 4,000 size reels that did not have it as well. So go ahead and see if you can't pull these off just like so. Next up, we're gonna go ahead now and grab our 14 millimeter wrench and our size double zero screwdriver, and we're gonna remove this screw here. Now, I have seen on a few examples, as well as this one, you see that little gouge right there? For some reason, the head of this screw was somehow underneath there and kind of cut in. If you come across that, you won't be able to back the screw out. What you wanna do is you wanna take your wrench and turn that screw a little bit, enough to free it. So that way it'll come up cleanly. So remove that screw. And we're gonna go ahead now and loosen that nut with the 14 millimeter wrench. Boom. Now since we're working from the outside in, Let's go ahead and take a look at the bail mechanism. Now starting with the line roller, I'm gonna use a size zero. If you find that it's kind of bound up due to corrosion, uh, you can go ahead maybe with a, a larger, this is a size one, and kind of crack it loose without mangling up the screw head. Now take yourself a mental picture of the orientation of the roller. You can see the wide side favors the arm while the narrower side favors the bail wire itself. So we're going to go ahead now and open this up. We're going to knock this bushing out. Hopefully it comes out without having to use a pick. There we go. And that bushing was located here. It's the larger of the two. Now for the roller right here. And the collar second bushing and the screw that acts also as an axle very straightforward 
You can go ahead now and clean it out as you normally would, usually a paper towel or a Q-tip and some denatured alcohol is what I use. I already cleaned these parts up pretty good, so they're ready to go back in right away. Now, in terms of how I prefer to oil or lubricate this, for salt water, I use grease, especially when they're using bushings. Yeah, it slows it down a little bit, but the grease is less prone to washing out, and these parts see tons of water because if you're fishing braid or mono, that water kind of weeps off the line, gets under the roller, dries out, and you have salt deposits under your line. So we're going to go ahead now and use grease. So in order to lubricate it, we're going to go ahead and put that screw back in and acts as an axle. I'm going to use my experimental aqua shield grease because why not? We're going to get that all sorts of lubed up. This stuff makes a mess. And I've never dealt with this stuff before, but we're going to find out how it likes to stay put. Oof, that's that's some messy stuff. I'm going to have to clean this table up before we move on to the next step. All right. Table, I'm going to take a shower. And again, we're going to go here like so. And we're going to go in here as well. This aqua shield stuff is without a doubt the messiest grease I've ever used in a fishing reel. But usually that means it's going to stay put, so I'm going to clean this up. Good enough for the girls that I go out with. And always make sure you check it to make sure it turns, it's not bound up. And that turns fine. Now moving along, let's go ahead now and take a look at the bail trip mechanism. Now, if you look here, you have your loaded spring. You never want to lift up on that it will shoot this plastic end clear across the room if you're lucky, if not in your eye. And you also have this little guy right here that runs on your standard spring. And this is what, when you open your bale, see how it kind of pushes that out? When you turn the rotor now, that's your trip. It goes like that, and then it's going to go ahead and close the bale. So in order to get this out without it blowing up in our face, we're going to go ahead and we're going to press down on this piece of plastic which sticks into the frame. And we're also going to be making sure our thumb covers up this part of the spring because you don't want this part to lean up because there's another side that can go flying. So with your thumb pressed down securely, we're going to go... Oh, and one other thing before I open this up. This piece of metal goes through that piece of plastic. So in order to get it to go back in, you have to compress the spring. Make sure that this metal bar that extends all the way up here is aligned properly enough so that it will make it through this piece of plastic and come out the other side. If you don't want to deal with that, don't open this part up. It can be a headache. Putting it back together could mean multiple attempts of this thing flying across the room. So if you don't need to get into it, don't. If you just want to take some hot water and blow it up underneath from here, and you know, see if it cleans it out as much as possible, be my guest. But since we're here uh, as a full service tutorial, let's go ahead and open her up. Again, size zero screwdriver. And like that, did you hear that snap? That was this unloading against there. And you see how it's kind of wanting to lean up? If I let go, it probably will just bind and stay, but we're not going to take any chances. We're going to go ahead and kind of compress it and lean it out all the way. So right now there's no tension or load on that spring. It's just sitting here. So if you did go through all that trouble, this is essentially all that you're, you're left with. 
something that you can probably or most likely get away with cleaning without even taking it apart. And you can see how that the bent metal arm here goes like that. If I let that go right now, it would fly across the room at 100 miles an hour. Just to give you an idea. And you can see at the top of this spring, that little collar goes like that. All right, so let's go ahead and get this thing back together. I always found it easiest to put that leg into the, the rotor itself, get that down and compressed, then bring your arm up and you may have to kind of lean this because it is a pretty exact hole size. Well, it's tough to see from my angle. think if I was looking at it as I would normally do it it would be easier bingo that was more difficult to do on camera just because the lighting it's just tough to see from my angle it's very dark underneath that arm so you can see now, this is in the rotor, this is through, we can go like this, and it works, it functions fully. So, it's up to you what you want to do in here. If you do decide to lube and grease this up, always remember grease does attract debris and sand, and if you put grease in here, it could get a little bit crunchy over time, because the sand will get stuck in the grease and never come out. So. I'm going to go ahead and take my Corrosion X. Open the bale like that. And just put it on the spring a little bit. And this arm there. And that's all I want to do. Nothing too crazy. Did I even get that on camera? Sorry if I didn't. I just applied grease to the spring. I'm going to take a drop of oil and put it on there. That's it. Nothing crazy. This corrosion stu uh, X stuff mixes well with the corrosion X grease and it, like, it does like to stay put. So basically we're just protecting the spring so that way they don't rust if they're exposed to salt water. And this is plastic. We don't have to worry about that. Plastic does not rust, ladies and gentlemen. Not sure if you knew that or not. Put that cap back on. A little bit of grease on the threads just because we want to. And we're going to clean this up with a paper towel. And on the other side, this is exciting. There's nothing at all in there whatsoever. That's made out of metal because it's a weight. Now, I always get a kick out of the fact that they use metal here as a counterbalance weight. Why don't they just design this side of the rotor heavier and make this out of metal because it's stronger than the composite they usually make it out of? I don't know. It's, it's not good sidetrack. This is a maintenance tutorial. All right, now that we've gone ahead and serviced pretty much everything to do with the rotor, and the rotor is removed, we're now ready to get inside the gearbox of the reel. What I like to do here now is remove this main gear and bearing retaining clip located right down there. Now this can be a little bit tricky, so what we're going to go ahead now and do is grab our pick tool and go down in there and see if we can't get that to pop out. See how it kind of came out? You can do one of two things. You can either pay, take a pair of tweezers and lift it out or you can take your pick tool and gently work it out. But when you get to the top, 
the last thing you want to do is kind of be rough with it because if you go to kind of pull it out and it catches on one of those threads you'll load it up and once it releases it'll go flying it's almost better to go like that to get it to come out on its own just a little tip now we can go ahead and remove the screws these three here and the one holding that cosmetic boot in place. So we're going to go ahead and take our size zero screwdriver. Being very careful because the finish on these BGs, it looks pretty, but it is kind of uh, fragile. It's easy to scratch. As a matter of fact, this specific one had some markings already around the screw slots. So I don't know if it came that way from the factory or if the person who owns this reel was a little rough with it. I don't know. I don't even, I don't even think he even opened it up. So it probably came from the factory. It's one of those finishes that if you kind of look at it funny, it'll kind of slough off. So we now have the three screws loosened up all the way, or at least we hope we do which is never the case. Come on. We can now lift that away and let's see if we can get the main gear out now. Sometimes it's a little bit tricky. Sometimes your best bet at this point is to remove those shims, put them aside, See if I can't line all the parts up in order. I'm never good at doing that. <laughs> There's other guys out there that, uh, mainly that pro fish. That dude has organization skills of uh, a different magnitude compared to me. Again, size zero. This top cap is going to lift right off, exposing the pinion, the AR clutch sleeve, and the AR clutch itself. Now, I already cleaned out this reel, so it's gonna, everything is gonna come out nice and easy. If your reel is brand new and you wanna do some preventative maintenance, or if it's been fished and it still has all the factory grease in it, that AR clutch can kinda of be a little bit tricky to get out. So what I recommend you do, if you have a kind of a detail screwdriver of any quality, get it down in there, and loosen up those screws without even removing the AR clutch bearing. Now I say quality because if there was any salt water that got down in there, those screws can kind of be locked in place and tricky to get out. So a strong detail screwdriver uh, will crack those loose. If you can't, you gotta find a way to lift this out and usually it's only held in by grease. So you can kind of get something around it real, relatively easily. It's never going to be fully locked in there unless it's really corroded. So now that we already have these two screws down in here, backed out all the way, let's go ahead now and remove the remaining uh, pieces of the pinion assembly. And what we're going to do is we're going to gently lift this out. And I want to kind of use this perspective here. And you're going to see at the base of the pinion, there is a shim or a washer that's still in place. So you want to be very mindful of that. So I'm going to place this right here. And I'm going to go back here and see if I can't remove the main gear. And you want to make sure that the main shaft is at the bottom of its stroke in order to pull the main gear. And sometimes it can still give you a little bit of trouble. So what we're going to do now is try to get this support rod out. So what we're going to do is we're going to gently kind of work it, give it a couple little wiggles, see if we can't get it to budge a little bit. And if we can't, we're just going to press down on the main gear so it doesn't go flying and damage itself. And you have that rod that's out there now. And we have this rod right here that's going to pop out. And now we can easily get our main gear out. And 
And now we can remove the spool shaft. Now, looking here, you can see that that bushing is still there. I'll grab that other screw that kind of stayed in there. Bad baby, bad baby. And that second pinion support bearing. Oh, that's magnetic apparently. <laughs> Alright, so basically the only thing we're left with now is the bearing and the oscillation cam gear, the screw, a bearing, another shim, and a washer underneath. So we're going to go ahead now, get this stuff out of the way, for size zero once again. I'm going to gently remove that screw, place that aside. And for those of you that, again, if the reel is not already cleaned out, which obviously it's not going to be if you're going in here for the first time anyway, this could be kind of tricky to get out because there will be a lot of grease and that bearing and this kind of support is going to stick to it. So you can't just lift it out. One tip is if you go from the outside here, just using a Q-tip, see if you can't work that bearing down. And by doing so, it'll kind of free up this a little bit better, give you a little bit more room and kind of break that grease seal. So we now have another bearing over here. All right, so we're now at the point that the only thing left remaining attached to the frame is the bail trip ramp and screw and the on and off switch for the anti-reverse. We're gonna leave those bits in place. The only thing that you're gonna do by removing this is fatigue that spring. It doesn't make sense to do it. It's gonna last a good long while, so we're gonna leave it in place and we're gonna apply grease to it when we reassemble the reel. And the bale trip ramp, if you wanna remove it, just remove that screw and then take your pick tool from underneath and just kind of pry it out. But again, I don't wanna stress the plastic if I don't have to. So we're gonna leave those two bits in place. And aside from that, we're now ready to go over what needs to be done with the individual parts inside the reel. So starting with the main gear, it is a zinc alloy sleeved around stainless steel. Good design, especially for a $100 reel. And there is also an O-ring here, which when it's back in place, kind of pushes up against that bearing and it will remove any of the little slop or play that can, uh, can happen in that in a, in a main gear and pinion relationship. And we're gonna go ahead now and grease the main gear. Take my corrosion X, a little silicone spatula, and just work our way around the perimeter. Now this is a saltwater reel, and anytime I'm doing anything maintenance-wise on a saltwater reel, I'm going heavy on the grease. Now for freshwater stuff, that's not the case. I'm gonna go lighter. This is gonna kind of uh, add a little bit of protection. So if there is any water intrusion, all surfaces are gonna be protected. Now we're not worried too much about the frame, but these zinc alloy main gears do not like salt water at all whatsoever. So we got a lot of grease on this main gear and that's now ready to be put aside. We're also going to take a look now at the pinion. We're going to do the same exact thing. We're going to take the grease and apply it all over the teeth, making sure it gets all the way down in. Now this is a silicone makeup spatula, believe it or not. And I'll tell you what, because it's so flexible, it really does a great job of getting the grease in all those little nooks and crannies. Now, keep in mind, if you're working on a freshwater version, you don't need to apply this much grease and you don't want any grease getting in here. But since this is a saltwater reel, we want to protect pretty much every metal surface. So that little bit of grease that went in there 
will work its way on the shaft when it's reinstalled and reinserted. So that looks good to me. Put that aside as well. Now let's take a look at the oscillation cam gear. This is the washer that's on the bottom. It is paper thin, thinner than paper actually. So you want to be very careful you don't bend it out of shape. We're also going to remove the bearing. And there's also a little washer underneath it. We're now going to go ahead once again with our grease. And again, salt water, we're protecting this reel from the elements. Otherwise, we're going to go a lot lighter. All your freshwater bass guys are probably like, what the heck are you putting so much grease on there? I love grease, just saying. So when you see me do my freshwater bass uh, <laughs> maintenance tutorials, I kind of make a goof. We're just going to use a little bit of grease, and I go like that and just load it on up. It has an application, and this is exactly it. So if you're fishing this reel in the surf, you really want to load everything up because you don't want that salt water and salt to get in there and start doing what salt does best to metal, and that's just destroying it. All right, so we're going to take our main shaft, lube it on up, and fill this cavity as well. And you also want to make sure you make direct contact with the surfaces that you're applying the grease to. Because sometimes grease just doesn't stick right away. You kind of got to work it in. Alrighty. Now these you can go light. Was it completely loaded up? <laughs> And this washer here, we're also going to apply a nice liberal coating of grease. It's at this point now, we're not going to do anything else with the frame, but we're now going to service all the bearings. And now I'm not going to pack every single bearing on camera. I'm just going to do one, and that's going to apply to pretty much every other one just to save time because bearings can take a little bit of time if you don't have a bearing packer. So we're going to do it the old school way and pop the shields and then just inject the grease into the bearing and stay tuned for that. Now with the BG, the first bearing that always seems to go is the one that's right on the pinion underneath the anti-reverse clutch. And you can see it's the driest. This one spins the most along with the one at the base of the pinion. So we definitely want to pay extra special attention to getting this reel, uh, this bearing protected. Now in order to service the ball bearing, you have to make sure it's the type that has a shield with a removable retaining clip. And you can see that gap right there and right there. That is the retaining clip. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a paper towel, because it kind of allows me to grip it a little bit better, especially if it's greasy and your hands are covered in grease. I'm going to take my fishing hook, and I'm going to go ahead and just slide it in like that and kind of lean it back and it should pop. See how it kind of popped out? Now you can use this method on every single ball bearing in this reel. So we're going to go ahead now and flip it over again and we're going to remove the other shield. Make sure it's in focus. There we go. There's the gap right there. And it's always best if you use a fishing hook to use one that doesn't have a curved point. You want it just a straight point. Makes it a little bit easier. Alright, so now we have both retainers removed. And sometimes if you drop the bearing on a flat surface, the shield will pop. If you don't, or if it doesn't, take your hook again. And kind of going along the inner race, kind of pull it towards your thumb and back. That way it'll start leaning. Sometimes they're a little finicky, sometimes you got to work your way around. Come on. And if 
it is a little bit of a pain. Oh, we had it. We had it. Don't go back in. Don't you dare. There we go. And the last thing you ever want to do is push again from this side. You don't want to do that. And work our way around again. You're almost there, buddy. Good. We now have our bearing with both shields removed. You can see that grease that's in there is kind of brownish. And there's not much. You can, you can pretty much see all the way through. So we want to pack this bearing full of grease. Now, however you choose to clean out your bearings is up to you. Uh, some guys blow them out with butane. Some guys blow them out with compressed air. Some guys scrub them with a toothbrush and soap. I go ahead and use a dental water pick. It's basically a miniature power washer for your uh, gums and teeth. And I use mine for, <laughs> for fishing reels. So I'm going to go ahead now and give each one of these ball bearings the water, uh, water pick treatment. In the meantime, remove all your shields and keep them and the matching retaining clips together. All right, now that we've cleaned out all the bearings, we're ready to go ahead and pack them with grease. And again, this is a saltwater reel, and I'm going for maximum uh, resistance to corrosion and salt. So we're going to pack each and every one of them with grease. And we're going to start with the easiest one, which is the largest pinion bearing. And this one is the one you have to kind of pay the most attention to. And we're going to go ahead and just load this puppy up with some grease on both sides. Make sure you get both sides. Now this grease is awful to work with. This is Aqua Shield. And always make sure that your shields are clean. And you'll, you can see how there's two ways you can install them. You can kind of see how it's domed facing my finger up here. That's how we're going to install them there. And don't worry, even if there's tons of grease, you can kind of go by feel with these retaining clips. <laughs> it's like I got chewing gum all over my fingers. Okay, that's in place. Come on. Now when you grease the bearings, it will make the reel a bit tighter. So be aware of that. And we're not gonna go too crazy on the other ones. Now if you have a bearing packing tool this process becomes a little less messy. Okay, we're going to go ahead now and clean them up. Now again, if you're the kind of guy that likes a very free spinning reel where you spin the handle and it just keeps going over and over and over again, uh, you're not going to want to do this. I cannot emphasize that enough. This will be a little bit sluggish, but it's going to take a splash. It's going to last longer. And if you're a surf fisherman, slower is usually better. So, especially in my neck of the woods. So it'll actually help you kind of slow things down a little bit. All right, so everything is now fully greased, uh, for the most part anyway. 
And we're gonna go ahead and apply a little bit of grease to the frame. We're not gonna go too crazy, but we're gonna grab our Corrosion X and kind of let's just work it around. Like Bob Ross, happy little grease. We're also going to apply grease to this side plate as well. Now, guys, keep in mind when you're when you're going around with the grease with your fingertip, do be careful. Some reels do have some unbroken edges, and that are that can be pretty sharp. Uh, not all, but there are some out there. You just got to be careful. Good. We are now ready to reassemble. So where do we start? We're gonna go ahead now and reinstall this piece here. Making sure that washer is in place. I think we put the cam gear, and now we just gotta find the right ball bearing, and I think that is it. Making sure not to forget that little spacer. Bingo. We also need to install this screw. Working with the greasy reels is fun, ain't it? At this point, we can get that shaft back in place. We're going to get the pinion bearing back down in place. And we're just going to use a Q-tip from the top. Kind of work it down into where it seats into that frame support like so we're going to get the bent bushing back in place followed by the pinion itself we're not going to fully seat it just yet because we're going to take these two stainless shafts and get everything mounted and if you get the pinion too fully seated it's you're not gonna be able to work it here so what I want to do is I want to lean it up and kind of back and rotate it so that is exposed and this can be a little bit tricky especially when it's really greasy We can now get that going through. That was easier than it usually is. Now we can push the pinion down into place. Get the pinion bearing seated. It's starting to turn into a fishing reel pretty quickly. At this point, we can grab our greased up main gear, apply a little bit of grease to the two shims, and add those shims on the top of the main gear. Pop that in place. Grab our side plate. Now the larger of the remaining two bearings goes into 
this cavity here should snap in fairly tightly. And again, a little bit of grease on top, never hurt nobody. Now we can go like this. Flip it around, add our bearing. Grab our paintbrush. And we're just gonna kinda spin it around like so until that bearing gets all the way down, exposing that lip. Flip her on over, grab our screws. Grab the boot, making sure that that shaft is fully seated because there's a little nub right here that needs this to be all the way up. So if it's not, you got to kind of finagle it to get it to go in its home properly. Come on. So at this point now, where well, we're going to get everything up here situated. So we have our retaining ring that needs to be seated there. Alrighty, now we're going to take our spatula and apply a little bit of grease in there. Kind of work it around. Again, water likes to sit in here and, you know, you, yeah, you want it to evaporate, but sometimes it just doesn't. So you want to coat everything in here, including the screw holes up top here. That way, you have at least some kind of barrier to prevent any corrosion. Also flip that switch and kind of plug it with a little bit more grease. Now this is one of those AR clutches that you can get a little bit of grease on and the only time it's going to slip or fail is if it gets really cold. So make up your mind as to whether or not you want to grease this or apply a drop of oil. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to apply oil to this one so what I'm going to do now is clean off my hands because I don't want any grease to contaminate that clutch sleeve. So make sure you kind of wipe your hands off pretty good. If, if you need to, grab this clutch sleeve with a paper towel and you'll see how it's got that cupped face on the top. That's how you know you got it going down the right way. And you can see there's too much grease down there, so we're going to back it out, clean it off again, and if you get it too contaminated, you're going to hit it with some, you know, solvent or uh, denatured alcohol. And we're going to go ahead and kind of move this grease out of harm's way. I'm grabbing it from the top so my hands aren't going to contaminate the part that interacts with the clutch. That should be good because if you look at the base here, 
There's a little bit of clearance, so that little bit of grease down there shouldn't have any interaction at all with the clutch. And this stuff likes to stay put. And boom. Another pain point on this reel is the top of the clutch. For whatever reason, water loves to accumulate there and really uh, do its dirty work. So we're going to make sure we have a little bit of a barrier at the top. And again, Corrosion X does do an excellent job of staying put. So we shouldn't see any issues with this getting down into that clutch, especially in the cold. In the warm, even if in the warm weather, even if it would did get down there, uh, it wouldn't cause any problems anyway. Now, if you look here, you can see the anti-reverse clutch switch. See how it kind of moves back and forth. Make sure when you put that clutch down in place, it is seated over top of that. We're now ready to put the cap back on. We're going to grab our rotor, flip it upside down, and inspect this little kind of brass piece here. And we're going to apply a little bit of grease because we can. Because if we do get anything up in there, we kind of want it to stay out of that central area. So that little film of grease will go a long way to trapping anything that may make its way inward. And as you spin the rotor, it'll kind of want to push it outward if that makes sense. Our rotor now is going back on. And again, this is gonna be used in the surf. So we're all right with it being a little tight. And this is your rotor nut. Make sure there's no sand or grit on the base of it. Apply a little bit of grease. Grab our 14 millimeter wrench and just go ahead and gently snug it up. And again, be careful with your turning. If you do feel anything out of alignment, uh, don't go nuts and keep turning it because you still haven't put the retaining clip in yet. Uh, this little retaining clip, I'm gonna install separate so that way you can see what it looks like without any of the grease interfering with it. So stick around for that. So if it looks like I cut out a different part or cut out a portion, that's because I did. And you can see that functions perfectly. Now that we've pretty much have the entire reel fully reassembled, we are ready to go ahead now and install the little retaining clip. Before we go ahead and pop it in there, we have to make sure that the bearing in here is fully seated. So we're gonna grab our crappy little paintbrush the reason why we're using this is it has a thin enough plastic end that we can kind of jam it in there and turn it around on that you know, bearing shield without doing any damage. And we're going to make sure that that bearing is seated all the way. And if you look right there, you can see that part of the, the shaft of the main gear has a little lip exposed. That's what's going to grab this retaining clip. So we're gonna go ahead now and drop that in. And we're gonna go ahead now and use the Q-tip method. Just take your standard run of the mill Q-tip, cut it in half, and you're gonna go ahead and gently get that retaining clip into the base of the reel. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in so we can get a real close look at what we're doing here. I'm going to go ahead and take one of the Q-tips and put it down on the one side. Oh, let me just move that out of the way. This is easier to do off camera, I promise. I'm going to go ahead and grab the other Q-tip. Just like so. Not too shabby. 
I'm going to go back in with our paintbrush and just make sure it's seated. And you can see how that leg is underneath that lip, that leg is underneath that lip, and so on and so forth. So that is fully installed correctly. At this point, we can go ahead and pop the rotor back on. Give it a spin, make sure everything sounds right. We're now ready to go ahead and put the spool assembly and support back together. Very simple. Click plate, two washers. Bearing and O-ring. And again, this reel didn't have that extra little washer that shows on the schematic. And we failed to put this screw in, so let's go ahead and get that puppy on there. Greasy fingers not making things easy. All right, let's go ahead now all right this is a fully surf proof dio bg that in my opinion is now in better condition than it was when it was brand new you can see it's a little bit tighter than what you would normally associate with a, a new reel. But it is silky smooth. Again, it's a little bit tight, so when you're turning the handle, there's that little resistance of, of grease. But this reel is going to be fully protected. Now, the last thing you want to do, pop some grease in whatever cavity the reel handles going in. That will seal that ball bearing from any kind of water intrusion and that will go a long long way in ensuring this reel performs like new longer. This my friends is ready to hit the beach. All right, let's take a quick look at the spool. There really isn't much to go over other than the drag stack and maybe applying a little bit of grease down at the base here. Make sure you do clean out this area if there's any salt or, or sand buildup underneath there. And just a little bit of grease. And make sure you kind of clean that top portion off because you don't want any salt or debris to cling to that. Uh, if you ever do have to take your spool off on the beach or on the sand, anytime you have grease exposed to anything, it's gonna attract uh, sand. So we have that taken care of and we're going to go and pop the drag stack and we're going to go in with our pick tool gently lift up that side kind of rotate it and see if we can't get under there and pop it up and always have your finger over that retaining clip because it will launch. We popped our drag stack that is the base there's nothing else that you have to uh, remove there and if you want to grease your drag stack after you clean it out it's entirely up to you but this drag stack is in cherry condition and you can see how you have the carbon fiber drag washer that gets laid down on the bottom you have a standard washer here another carbon fiber washer there an eared washer Another carbon fiber washer, again heavily greased, and then another standard washer at the top. All right, now with our drag stack back in place, we can grab the retaining ring and get her down in there. And you can see there is a groove where it's gonna wanna go. And this can be a little bit tricky. This is not the easiest of clips to get back into place. Make sure you do have a finger in place to make sure that it doesn't go flying. 
and let's get this last one. Boom. All right, so that covers the spool. Very straightforward. And our drag knob, it has a little seal at the top here. And I'm always a fan of squeezing some grease in there. Because once it's in there, it's in there. And it kind of makes for a more pleasant sound. Whether it protects anything, I don't know. But I like it. And a light coating of grease on that lip seal. All right, moving right along. Now, for those of you out there that made it this far, I thank each and every one of you for all the time you guys spent here. I really do hope you found this useful. And if you did, please hit that like button. And if you're not already a subscriber, please subscribe. And until next time, guys, tight lines, and I shall see you soon. This is a nice reel. Pretty looking, too. Dower. I thought this was like machined into the frame when this reel first came out. That would have been even more badass. Yeah, came on ball.